Hey there, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I have a pretty interesting video to go over with you today and it's not going to be in regards to any specific products as much as it's going to be revolving around the California Residential Building Code for 2022 that a lot of jurisdictions have started to adopt um, within our state and specifically I want to talk about section R328 of energy storage systems. Now, for those of you that may not be aware, California has transitioned to a solar billing program from a net metering program. So it's really in your best interest to incorporate batteries with your purchase of a solar system to help eliminate or drastically reduce your electrical bill. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to do a video so that way if you're looking to go solar or get batteries added onto your existing solar system or get a solar plus storage system for the first time, you kind of have a good understanding of where you can and can't install your batteries um, and you know it, it'll help set the expectation for the overall project. So uh, for those of you that live in our area of California, go ahead, use that link down in the description below. You can request your quote. We're certified for Enphase Energy, uh, Canadian Solar EP Cube, Tesla Powerwall, Franklin Whole Home Batteries, and Solar Edge with their Home Hub. All right, so let's talk about the codes that I'm referencing. Now, I'm going to include a link down in the description from a website that we use to research codes and stay up to date on them. Uh, it's called UpCodes, really helpful. We're not sponsored by them or anything, but it's a great site for anybody in construction, whether you're an electrician or a solar installer or a home builder, they always have the most current codes available to you. Now, specifically, we're going to be looking at the California Residential Building Code for 2022. This is becoming widely adopted within many of the jurisdictions in California. And we're looking at Section R328, which is Energy Storage Systems. The first thing I want to start off with is the exemptions. So this is something I really hope to see get resolved because it would make it so much easier if if batteries could be marked for residential use. So if you read, it will say ESS, energy storage systems, listed and labeled in accordance with UL 9540, which is a special battery certification indicating that the battery is safe for residential use and marked for use in residential dwelling units. Now see, this is a very important word or sentence right here, pre-word after the UL 9540 were installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions and the California Electrical Code. The one thing that really stands out is for use in residential dwelling units. Now, this is something that UL and other third-party testing facilities haven't developed the test for this. And what they're really looking for in the current code is that a battery is as safe as your microwave, as your refrigerator, as your stove. Um, that's what they want. They want it to be as safe as those appliances within your home have the UL 9540 certification, but then also have some other tests done that doesn't exist that indicates it is the safest battery period that, you know, it's no more harmful or dangerous than your everyday appliances that you're accustomed to. There are no exemptions. We have to follow all the requirements within this section. Uh, most of them are pretty straightforward. You know, hey, the battery's got to be properly certified. The big one they look for is UL9540. Now, a lot of the batteries we install from Enphase, from the Canadian Solar EP Cube, to the Franklin Whole Home Battery, and even Solar Edge's home battery have this certification along with a harder certification called UL9540A, and that's a large scale fire test. And that's where spacing requirements come in. So uh, batteries are required to be not less than three feet apart, except where smaller separations are documented to be adequate based on large scale fire testing. And that's that UL 9540A certification. So with that extra certification, batteries like Canadian Solar's EP Cube right here can be installed 12 inches apart. Now, let's move on to location. So we understand if you're looking at getting batteries, you know, your batteries, depending on how many you're getting, are going to need quite a bit of wall space, whether it's vertically or horizontally, you got to take that into account. 
And the spacing is one of those factors that you also have to take into account. But really there's two places we should be looking at when installing a battery. Uh, attached garages separated from the dwelling unit's living space in accordance with section 302.6 of the building code. What would be a separation of the living space? Well, that would be your fire barrier wall, you know, which all modern day, even older homes have, as well as having that fire door that's attached to your garage. The other location is outdoors or on the exterior side of exterior walls located not less than three feet from doors and windows directly entering the dwelling unit. This is regardless of that large scale fire test. That's an area where I think a lot of jurisdictions need to do better about and apply some common sense to the types of windows that the battery should be installed away from. Uh, if we move on throughout the code, you'll find sections about how many batteries you can install within your residence inside or outside, whether it's in the garage um, in that reference. Uh, electrical installations, you know, they, they want uh, products to have more UL certifications, which is normal. Uh, one area that we keep running into misunderstanding is uh, section R328.7, which is the fire detection device that needs to be installed when the battery is installed in the garage. So rooms and areas within dwelling units, basements, and attached garages in which energy storage systems are installed shall be protected by smoke alarms in accordance with section R314. Now, what we run into in terms of issues is the following sentence, which is a heat detector listed and interconnected to the smoke alarms shall be installed in locations within dwelling units and attached garages where smoke alarms cannot be installed based on their listings. So they're very specific in this, and it's very clear that they don't want heat detectors as the primary, but as a secondary if you can't install the smoke alarm. Now, when we get to the garage under section R328.8, protection from impact, this, is a, this was a really valuable thing that the individuals that helped develop these codes implemented. And it gave us a diagram, an illustration of multiple garage scenarios. And the big thing is the return wall. This is something we're constantly having to fight with some jurisdictions on is the return wall. And basically how the code says it is if the return, if the garage has a return wall, which a lot of garage garages have this, and the battery doesn't protrude out past that return wall, then it is not considered an impact zone and we don't need to install impact barriers. And the battery's totally, it doesn't even need to be 36 inches in the air. It's just outside of the area where a vehicle could impact it. And that's illustrated on the right hand side of this diagram. Now this is the same for the left side because they are showing multiple scenarios. So on the left side of this example, they're also showing a garage that doesn't have a return wall at all, which I've seen these types of garages, they do exist. And we've had to install impact barriers. We can use bolt downs. They tell us what type of bolt down impact barriers we can use. It's very straightforward. Uh, we don't install any batteries straight on in the garage. We just don't think those are the best place. So depending on how shallow your garage is, you probably don't want the batteries there in the first place. So this is an area where we tend to run into some complications with some of the jurisdictions um, because they, they don't understand the return wall. They seem to just neglect this entire uh, piece. There's some other things that go on, but yeah, I kind of just wanted to do a nice little video to talk about the current code, some of the troubles and issues that we've run into, and hopefully get more people aware of the R328 section. Um, but that's really it. Of course, if you're interested in going solar and you want to get batteries, we're your man. I mean, I got you covered. We got the end phase batteries. We have the five P's in stock. We have the Canadian Solar EP Cube, which is a great hybrid solution. Also can be AC coupled and it's up to 20 kilowatt hours in a really compact format. We then obviously have Franklin whole home batteries for that happy medium for those of you that want the Tesla Powerwall and don't have 10 feet of wall space to sacrifice because they need that three foot fire setback. And then if you have Solar Edge and you're looking to upgrade your existing Solar Edge inverter to a home hub so that way you can retrofit a Solar Edge home battery to it, we can do that for you. We are certified for all the products that you're going to want and or need over the next 10, 15, 25 years. So go ahead, use the link down in the description below, get your quote. We are here for you 